Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about closing distance safely in combat sports. But in particular, I'm talking about grapplers who wanna close distance safely in mixed martial arts, especially if they're facing a striker. They gotta close that distance safely to be able to get in that clinch position to get their takedowns. Bazooka Joe Baltalini. One of the biggest challenges in closing distance is getting a reaction from your opponent because they're trying to strike you as you come in. So you have to use a lot of feints, get reactions from your opponents. What I call shell opportunities. I need to be able to create that reaction and get my opponent to get their hands up. If I can get my opponents to defend their head by having their hands up, that's my opportunity to close distance. So this video, I'm gonna show you different ways to get that shell opportunity from your opponent. Whether it's with feints, strikes, or different types of game plans and strategies, I'm gonna teach you how to get in safely. One of the most difficult tasks in MMA could be closing the distance, especially with the small gloves. You don't wanna get caught coming in. So we have to learn how to close that distance safely. So this is what this video is about. So in order to do so, I need to make sure I get a reaction from my opponent. If my opponent is waiting to throw a shot on me, okay, a lot of fighters want that big power hand. So if I'm waiting here, how do I close that distance? Because as soon as I step in, Matt waits, he's waiting to throw that punch. Or he's jabbing me every time I come in, right? So how do I close that distance? Especially if I'm going to be a grappler, I want to get in there, use the tie clinch, use my wrestling, and try to take him down. So the first thing you have to do is create a feint, okay? I need to get a reaction. So if Matt and I are lined up here, I'm gonna create and get a reaction. As soon as I get a reaction, I kind of create little off-tempo enters. If my opponent expects me just to come in and step, it's easy to get that timing. So by mixing in the feints, I get different reactions, and then boom, I go and react, okay? But in order to make a feint work a little bit better, obviously I do need to mix my strikes. So if I just feint without throwing, I'm not gonna get a big enough reaction. So I might throw a hard one too, and then I feint, yes. And now it's easier for my opponent to bite. So using the feint, off-tempo enters, gonna help you enter safely. Okay, and the note, you're gonna notice, when I do enter now to make it safely, I gotta make sure my hands are protecting against my, one, him punching me, and I'm gonna try to long guard him right away. So when I faint, right away I grab the hands. I got fingers in MMA, so I grab here. Now I could work my way in to different types of grips and techniques. The second safe enter is gonna be using our front kicks and our round kicks. If we're waiting here, especially in mixed martial arts where everybody wants to throw their punches, kicks from the outside could help you get that nice reaction. I want my opponent's hands protecting themselves because when they're protecting themselves, they're not hitting me. So the best way is to stay long and whip the body kicks or the front kicks. So if Matt and I are lined up, his hands might be moving, right? So he's waiting. If I step in, he might throw. So if I get a nice front kick, but ideally, I love the body kick. Whether it's switch or outside, I'm gonna kick the body, boom. In order for Matt to block, you see that he has to put both hands to block the kick. I'll throw my right side. So here, boom, I get that reaction. So now I throw a few hard ones and then I can get that reaction. But right away, see how I go in, close and grab the hands. If I just kick and then I enter with my hands here, I get caught. So I need to be keep kicking the arms, right? Mixing in front kicks, hard round kicks. And then I go in, right away I'd like to grab the hands. All right, nice and safe. The third safe enter actually works well with the front kicks because you want to bring your knee up. That's what I call knee faint enters. So if I've thrown round kicks or front kicks, right, I get my knee up. It's this movement they're looking for. They see the round kick. They see the front kick, right? Now, the reaction when they see a front kick might be to grab. Okay, if I throw the round kick, it's the block. Now I have that perfect reaction. As soon as I go to throw, I get a nice reaction and I get to come in again, my hands on the head, on the hands, because now they can't hit me. So that's my safe enter. But again, to use these knee feints, I need to throw a few kicks, stay nice and long, get the reaction, boom, safe enter into my clinch, right? And then I can play with my different grips from there. The fourth safe enter is head movement and understanding and controlling distance. 
right? I don't want to keep my head on a straight line coming in. My opponent's looking to draw me in. So if Matt's sitting here waiting with his nice power rear hand, if I try to enter in a straight line, it's easy. So I need to give it a harder pass to land. So you see me moving, okay? Always creating different feints with my head movement. At least when he does throw, he might throw the right hand, boom, I could angle off and then make an enter. All right, so my head has to make it off center line to make him harder to hit. But it's better with the feints to keep my hands moving. And the other thing is, if I'm gonna go strike from this outside position, this is where distance control becomes really important. Even if I'm moving my head, but if Matt's far away and he's exiting, I have to be careful throwing my strike nice and long because he's gonna time me. So I need to close my distance with my feet before I throw with the punch. So for the example, if I'm gonna throw a hard cross hook, if Matt's far away from me, the last thing I wanna do is reach and put my hand out of position now because I'm so far away. So the proper way is I move my head, I close my distance, now look where I'm at. And now I can throw my combination. Throwing from here exposes my chin, but if I can move my head, close my distance, now I'm in mid range, boom, boom, boom and I could attack and still stay defensive, okay? Safe enter. Number five and six are gonna be more of your untraditional enters. And I like them because they close distance safely. It lets you stay long and lets you blitz your opponent. So the two I'm talking about is the Superman and the lunging lead hook. It helps you close that distance as fast as possible, blitzing your opponent and be able to attack. So if I'm here with Matt staying in that double distance nice and long, I might wanna wait Right, if I step slowly, he's waiting. So I need to control that distance. So if I might throw a quick one here, and then boom, I close that distance. I, I make my opponent confused about the range I can throw my weapon. So if I sit here a few times, he thinks my range of my weapon is only here. But next thing that he knows, boom, I'm able to close that distance quickly. So I'm messing around with how fast I can close my distance. All right, same thing with my lunging lead hook. If I'm staying out long and I'm using different feints, right? So if I'm feinting with my right hand, I get a reaction, I faint. Now I'm gonna use this to propel, boom, that lunging lead hook. So all about using my footwork to get in safely. But it all comes back to number one, use those feints. Faint, 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 and then boom, my Superman right down the middle. I'm here, boom, fainting with my shoulders, moving, he moves, shaboom. I attack with that lunging lead hook. So using my footwork and to strike with speed and a lot of good power. Especially if he comes forward as I'm meeting him, extra impact, good chance at getting a finish. The last safe enter I'm gonna talk about is using the long guard. And I always have to control my opponent's hands. If I can control my opponent's hands, it's gonna limit the amount he's gonna hit me. So whatever range I'm in, wherever I'm striking, I need to make sure when I get close to Matt and I'm attacking right away, I want to try to get to this position. It's really safe for me because I can enter safely and control. I can use different wrestling grip, grips and different clinch grips as well. So regardless what it is, you see me here trying to get my hands. I match the hands. So using this position right away, my opponent matches hands, which is beautiful now because I can elbow into my transitions, getting into that clinch range. So it's all about understanding the distance. So I can stay nice and long, right? As soon as I get this position, I use this long guard, right? Even though we're in mid range, I feel safe because my hands are on top of his. And since I know I want to grapple and clinch, what I can do is take my range even closer. Step a little closer. Now I can use different clinch grips safely. All right, now I could attack hand on top and use my elbows, All right? So safe entering, control my opponent's hands. Ideally, I want my hands on top of his so I can control them and smack them with elbows. All right, so whatever the combination is, boom, hands on top and I could mix in different elbows, create my exit, okay? Using the long guard. There you have it, different ways to close distance safely in mixed martial arts. Especially if you're that grappler trying to close the distance on a striker, it has to be done safely. Combat sports and martial arts is all about distance control, whether you're managing it to stay away from strikes or closing the distance to be able to use your wrestling, it's all about managing the space where you wanna be. 
So use these different strategies, enter safely, and use the game plan that you want to employ, right? It's not up to your opponent, it's all about you. Make sure you keep liking, subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA, hit that bell notification, and be the first to get these videos. We'll see you next week.